and welcome to Creating the Vision. I'm Maria Maldonado-Smith, your host, and I'm so excited to introduce you to our guest for today. A dear friend of mine met on Instagram, but we have actually, actually, we've never met in real life. I always feel like we have, but we have not met in real life. However, we see each other a lot because we do stuff like this. We Zoom, we collaborate, we work on a lot of stuff, but I'm really excited to have Marissa on today. Her name is Marissa Lonick, and I'm going to have her share a little bit about her story and how she has created the vision for the entrepreneurial journey that she has completely trailblazed a path for in her life. And I am so super excited for you guys to hear her story because I think she will resonate with a lot of you who have maybe thought to yourself like, man, what if, or I have this idea, maybe Maybe I could take it somewhere, maybe not. And she is living proof that you can. And so I really want her to just dive in and tell her story because it's an incredible one. And I'm really fortunate that I get to call her my friend and my sister in entrepreneurship because I learned so much from this woman. And I think more than anything, she has taught me so much about time management, which is her specialty. She is the expert and guru in it. And so I want her to share a little bit about what she does and how she has gotten there. So. Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you, Marissa, for you to introduce yourself and share your story. Well, thank you. That was like the nicest, best intro ever, Maria. <laughs> and one of these days, we're going to be able to say that we've met in real life. It sure yes. does feel like we have. So. Yes, it does. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. And thank you again for that warm welcome and introduction. And I feel like there are a lot of directions I could go with this question. And so I'll just, I'll kind of give you a little bit of a chronological rundown of how my organization, Mama Work It, came to be. So I support moms first and foremost. Mama Work It supports moms in the juggle, the juggle of work life, mom life, spouse life, fill in the blank life. And we do that via courses, via coaching, via resources, the podcast you name it, books. And how this journey began was back in 2013, a long time ago now, I became a mom. I became a mom to actually twins <laughs> who <laughs> arrived early to the party as most twins do. <laughs> they were preemies. We were in the middle of renovating our first home. We hadn't even moved in yet. And to say that I enjoy planning that I like to plan, I think is an understatement. Like I really, this is like a form of self care for me. And then when my life just kind of flip flopped all the way around where, you know, my babies arrived early, I had no place to bring them home to. I was like, one of those moms who really wanted to have that Pinterest nursery ready for them. And we were, you know, stepping over boxes and walking into a construction zone, basically, when we brought them home. And so it was sort of like entering motherhood felt like baptism by fire. But you know, as most moms out there listening can probably relate with any situation, even if you do have the Pinterest nursery set up, it probably feels this way. And so, you know, you figure it out. You figure out what's working, what's not. And I did just like we all do. Mm -hmm. And I was a working mom. You know, I took my maternity leave and then I went back to work. And again, outside looking in, I think it looked like I had it all together. You know, I had mm -hmm. childcare. I had a great job, a great title at work. I had a semi clean home. You know, how clean can it really be with two little babies all <laughs> right. the time? I was married, happily married. And, you know, I think it looked great. And some days I felt great, but most days I felt a little more like the hot mess express. Mm -hmm. And I was struggling. I was, you know, I felt like I had no time for myself. I felt like I had no time to dedicate to an identity that felt like it was on the back burner at that point. I wanted so badly to be the best mom. And yet I also, as you are, as I'm sure your listeners are, I was and still am very ambitious and I wanted to grow in my career and I didn't want it to be one or the other. And so I was in a rough place. And what happened when I was in that rough place was I got offered a job promotion. <laughs> yeah. And I was That's like, woo, okay, awesome, exciting. <laughs> and then as soon as all the excitement wore off and the details started to sink in, the fear sunk in too. 
because this job promotion would mean going across the country to a place that we didn't really know anyone. It would mean commuting more often than I was. It would mean more responsibilities, lots of things, right? And I already felt like I had no time. So now I was going to walk into a situation where that was going to be 10 times harder and I was terrified. So what did I do? Well, like a normal person, I turned it down. And then I had two days of immense regret. I felt completely messed up. (laughs) Like this was not the right choice. Really upset with myself. Talked to my husband and he was like, well, let's just try it. Mm. And I was like, you're right. We should try it. So we did. So we moved across country. I started this new role. And what I realized when I got to the West Coast, I'm from the East Coast. When I got to the West Coast was managing my time didn't get harder. It just got different. Mm. So this sort of full force drove me into like even more efficiency models that I hadn't been implementing before. It made me much more intentional in how I was using my time. I focused on quality over quantity. And because I was fulfilling a part of my own identity of going after something that was important to me, of being ambitious and kind of growing my career, I was showing up as such a better version of myself in other spaces of my life. Mm-hmm. And so did all this. We're not even at the entrepreneurial part. Oh my God, how long is this podcast? I'm sorry. <laughs> did all this. Great. I'll fast forward. <laughs> realized as I was doing this, I wanted a creative outlet. I wanted to, as you did, I remember we were, we both started our businesses as blogs. So I started blogging Mm -hmm. for working moms. And this was really just me sort of with an online journal of like Mm -hmm. funny stories I was dealing with or going through, you know, not so funny situations that were stressing me out, you know, like all the normal working mom stuff. And I'd always get the question, when I would like make new friends or meet people or just ch- talk about things I was doing is like, how do you have time? How do you have time? And at this point, we were adding to our family a third baby. You know, my career had grown even more. I had this blog and I thought, okay, maybe this is the area that I really need to sort of explore and, and support the working mom community who I felt really drawn to in, in my life. And so. I started to build a business out of this. I started to monetize things that I was doing. So I built my first course. I wrote my first book, Time Management. And I did this sort of as a side hustle alongside my corporate career. And I can't say that I didn't have the thought of leaving that corporate career, but I wasn't yet ready to do so. Mm -hmm. And I still felt like it was working because I had systems in place and ways to make it work. Mm -hmm. Until the day it started to feel misaligned. And when that started to feel misaligned, everything started to feel hard. The work I once enjoyed doing felt hard. Just my overall like demeanor about things, like the outlook was different, like things just started to feel, and really that's the best word I can use is misaligned. Mm. And so at that point I started to develop my exit strategy and I stepped full time into my business, Mama Work It. That was three years into building it alongside the corporate world. And that's what I've been doing ever since. So I'm a certified intuitive life and business coach. I've written three books to date, have a top rated podcast. And I just feel so passionate and so blessed that this is what I get to do every single day. Oh, I love it. There's so many great, just little nuggets that I like pulled out from, from you sharing. And honestly, interestingly enough, I don't know if I knew the alignment that we had with moving for job promotions because Mm. my job promotion moved us from where I was born and raised like my entire life and moved us from Kentucky to Atlanta. And yeah, to your point, we really, we had a moment where we, because I was actually going to take a pay cut, which I thought at that time was just like astounding. Like what? You're going to make me manage people and I'm not going to get paid as much. Like they're going to make more money than me. (laughs) Like, I don't really think that this is stuff that I want to sign up for. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. But it kept being sold to me as, you know, the opportunity, you know, it's just such a great opportunity. Like, I'm not really seeing any opportunity in this. So at first I was not very interested in it at all. And to your point, then it became, 
but what are the other opportunities that come with it? And I think that sometimes when we limit ourselves, we just maybe look at the, the, the situation I was in, but it actually ended up affording us an opportunity for my husband to go with a different company and he has thrived and it's been a phenomenal situation. He's still with them. And we've since made two more moves as a result of his, you know, of his work. And so I think there was just different, different steps, you know, and I think that's the cool thing about taking those risks. Right. And then mm -hmm. just going back to what you said about, you felt that your identity and motherhood was, or, you know, when, when you became a mom, your identity kind of took a back burner. I, I find so much, so much parody and, and, and like relation to that because I, I, I have a tendency to have this like all or nothing mindset. And I think that's what makes me very successful as an entrepreneur. And I mean, there's still so many more things that I want to do, but it's what allows me to start a project, finish it, see it through to fruition and like get it up off the ground. It's mm -hmm. what allows me when I'm in with the client to focus and do all of that. At the same time, there's a lot of other things too. It's like I'm very much a perfectionist. So I don't like putting anything. I mean, this podcast was supposed to launch about this time last year, but more so I think because I'm so all or nothing, like when I became a mom, it's like my identity just became like mom. And it was really hard for me to transition back into my corporate work. And I struggled significantly with that shift and that balance. And because I had just been mom for almost six months. And so going back to that work, the work life portion of it. So I think that's something that even as we think about potentially becoming an entrepreneur or thinking about a side hustle, which I give you so much props because while I was building it as a little bit of a side hustle, I kind of like ripped the bandaid off and was like, nope, I'm just going to kind of figure this out because I made a promise to myself that I was going to leave corporate before the age of 40. And I was pushing 40 and I'm like, I'm just done. Like I'm done. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't enjoy this. I don't like it. There's nothing here for me. Nothing is serving me. I'm not serving anyone because I'm not happy. So like, we just got to like do the dang thing. You mentioned that that there was kind of that moment for you. Was there a particular moment? Like, was there a, a catalyst that was like, yep, that was the day. Like, I remember it and I just knew I had to go. Or was it more of a gradual shift? Yeah, that's such a good question. I would say, similar to you, I when, when the decision had been made, I put a deadline on it like you did, like before mm -hmm. I turned 40. For me, it was before I turned 37. Okay. It's my 37th birthday. I said before then, I love, I love a I'm good leaving. deadline. <laughs> oh, me too. Yeah. You need, you need one. And birthdays yes. are a great one, you know, mm -hmm. because it's like, I said to myself, I didn't want to turn another year older and be in the same position because mm -hmm. as you know, like with, when they say when you're raising kids, like the days are long, but the years are short, mm -hmm. it feels similar in your own life. Right. Because I am such an analytical, logical person, this was not by any means like one day I woke up and said, today's the day. No, this was a long, drawn out, probably year long internal battle within myself. Mm. I mean, this was like an internal argument all day, every day for probably close to a year. There was a lot of like spirituality involved in this, <laughs> like a lot of give me a sign, give me a sign. And then I'd see the sign everywhere. And then I'd be afraid. And then I'd have that conversation again. And it was just like on repeat. I mean, it got so bad, Maria. I think, you know, there's only a select few people I'd talk to about this because it was so personal to me and I'm pretty private, but it got so bad. Even I was sick of listening to it. Like, mm. you know, and so, no, it was definitely, it was definitely more <laughs> gradual, I'd say, than not. But you know what? That's, that's how I am. That's how I process. Like, I think about lots of decisions in my life. And for the most part, I am someone who does really like dissect things. I mean, sure, as an entrepreneur, we make decisions at all the time. And mm -hmm. there are certain ones we have, you know, we become better at being more decisive on. But when it mm -hmm. comes to these like, major life things. I am definitely someone who analyzes like the crap out of them. And, 
Yeah. Like no, no stone unturned. Is that what they say? Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. Leave no stone. Yes. But here's um, what I'll tell you. If you are listening and you're also like this and you're driving yourself crazy with all the what ifs like I did, this is what I challenge my clients to do is for every what if that you're telling yourself against the decision of like, or the what ifs that are taking, spiraling you down that rabbit hole of like negativity you deserve to give the what ifs on the other side the same amount of time and attention. Oh, I love that. That's so true. That's so true because we, I, I think, yeah, I mean, you and I, we work in similar capacities with clients, but definitely different. And, you know, I, we talk, I think you and I both kind of preach the same message of kind of that fear that can overcome people. I mean, it's, it's a majority of the reason why people don't end up making or taking that next step because it's, you know, it's a risk that they have just completely talked themselves out of because Mm -hmm. they have, they have gone through all of the what ifs on the negative side. You know, what if I fail? What if I, you know, invest and this turns out not to be, you know, as fruitful as I hoped or, you know, what if, I don't know, do this and realize I don't want to do this or et cetera. But the thing is, is the flip side of that is the, what if it does work? Yeah. What if you do make money? What if you find that you truly enjoy it? You know, what's the, and I always tell people too, I mean, I know you do as well, but I mean, you're never going to know if you don't try. And that's mm-hmm. what it came down to me was if I don't try this, then I'm never going to know. And it's going to become a regret. And I try to live my life with no regrets. Yeah. Yeah. When you see those, those things, when they ask, you know, people on their deathbed, like, what's the one thing that you regret? Mm-hmm. And they're like, not doing this, right? Mm-hmm. Or not trying that. And so you have to yes. remember that. The thing too, that I'll say, because for me on paper, I don't know about you, Maria, but like for me on paper, it did not make financial sense for me when I quit my job, my really well paying high title corporate leadership role to step into my business. Yeah. It did Mm -hmm. not make sense on paper and I'm a very logical person. And so this was a big hurdle I had to get through, but somebody like a mentor of mine said to me, and this really helped with that. So if you're struggling with this and you're listening is you're a smart person, like you're going to find a way to make money. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to find a way to make money. Mm -hmm. And that was like, well, yeah, duh, I will, you know? So even if it doesn't look exactly like I'm anticipating it to look, I am going to figure this out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, and I think you also too, this is another thing that I think entrepreneurs, especially, I think we get this idea that people just like they did, they just pulled the, 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 the plug on their corporate and then shifted the next day and then boom like wild success. No but, way. Yeah, no way. Exactly. <laughs> I think that's why a lot of people don't go into entrepreneurship or try their own thing is because they're constantly just looking at those highlight reels of other people's mm-hmm. success. And yeah. I think that's something that in your story is needs to be reiterated and people need to be reminded of that you built this for the first three years alongside your corporate career and you found the time in the cracks. And so I always say this to people too, because I share your story a lot because people use time and this is kind of how we'll segue too into biz management and time management because people, and I'm sure you hear this, especially as a time management guru, they make the excuse of time all the time. Well, I don't have time for this. I don't have time. I mean, you know, my mom always used to say, well, if you don't have time, it just means that, you know, you just don't want it enough. Like, cause if you wanted it enough, you would create the time for it and you'd find the time. And I think that, you know, how you phrase it is so perfect and, and just some of the techniques and stuff that you use, but what are, what are some of the ways in which we can manage our time better or just even some of the experiences or just your kind of explanation to how, how can we manage our time better when we're ones who maybe typically make excuses about our lack of time? Yeah. Your mom's a really smart lady because that's so true. I mean, it's not that you don't have time. It's that it's just not a priority for you. And that's the bottom line. I mean, we choose every single day how we spend our time. We choose what we fill it with. And Mm -hmm. you can argue with me. And I mean, these decisions are not always easy. Like for many years, I chose to go into the office and spend my time at work because it was a priority to me to collect that paycheck or to, you know, grow in my corporate career or to, you know, fill in the blank, not get fired. I don't know, you know, to, (laughs) that was my choice. But, but the empowering thing there Mm -hmm. is like, it's always our choice. 
Mm. It's always our choice, right? I love that. It's always our choice. I love that. It's always our choice because we can, when we give that away, that power away, that's when we, we feel out of control. We feel like time is controlling us, not we're controlling it, right? We feel like we get to the end of the day. We're so, we were so busy. We were so frazzled. We didn't stop. We're exhausted and we feel defeated rather than getting to the end of the day, feeling super productive and proud and accomplished. And so the first thing is recognizing that empowerment. And again, not to not to belittle this or knock this. Like it's not easy. Like I understand. I, I got a mortgage to pay too. I got kids to feed. Like these are not easy decisions to make by all means. And sometimes we just have to recognize that in this season, yes, I have to continue doing what I'm doing to bring in the money or to do this or to do that. Right. But the fact that you realize that that's your choice, I think already is a huge game changer. The second thing is just eliminate the phrase, I don't have time from your vocabulary. Just totally catch yourself when you say it, scratch it from your regular, you know, routine phrasing. I, and trust me, I've been guilty of this. I used to say it ad nauseum all day, every day. I don't have time for that. Who has time for that? I don't have time. And what happens is when you say things like this, Mm -hmm. it's a ripple effect. So Mm -hmm. it becomes, it's what I teach called TFAR, thoughts, feelings, actions, results. Okay. So your thoughts are, I don't have time, right? Which makes you feel totally out of control of your time, your schedule, your priorities, all the things, which means your actions follow. So, okay. So let's say you do want to start this side hustle business, but you feel busy all the time. You're telling yourself you don't have time. Well, what do you do? You don't actually do it. Your actions Mm -hmm. follow. Mm -hmm. You end up not doing it and your results follow that. And then you never get this off the ground. So if you can flip the script on that, if you can stop telling yourself, I don't have time and start using the verbiage, it's not a priority to me, something will drastically change for you. So if it is indeed building this business or going after this goal, whatever that is, fill in the blank, I don't have time to build my business or building my business isn't a priority to me, something changes there. And it's one of two directions you're going to feel, one of two ways you're going to feel And they're both a win, if you ask me. So the first Mm -hmm. way you're going to feel is, I don't have time to start my business. You're going to feel a sense of relief. You're going to feel like a weight's been lifted off your shoulders and you're going to be like, well, you know what? In this season, it's just, it's not a priority to me. Sorry. It's not a priority to me to start my business, Mm -hmm. a sense of relief. And so you're going to get rid of all that guilt, all that shame, all that shoulding you're mm-hmm. doing. <laughs> and <laughs> yes. you're going to be able to sort of clear the clutter of this and kind of move on with things that are indeed a priority to you. Maybe the priority to you right now is taking care of your kid who just really, really needs some one-on-one attention. Maybe mm. the priority to you right now is, I don't know, moving, right? Maybe you're mm-hmm. in the middle of a move or you want to look for a new home or whatever it is. I mean, there's mm-hmm. so many things, but just feeling aligned in that prioritization and that decision makes a huge shift and difference into how you're showing up. So Mm. if you feel like a weight's been lifted when you say working on my business isn't a priority to me, that's a win. On the other hand, if you say this out loud, working on my business isn't a priority to me and you feel like ick, you feel like that does not feel true or right Mm. or something like that feels sits well with me. Well, guess what? You're going to find a way to make it a priority. You're going to figure out a creative solution. You're going to wake up earlier. You're going to go to bed later. You're going to use block out time on your calendar and put an hour in here or there. You're going to strategize things on your commute home. You're going to figure it out because when something is a priority to you, as your wise mother said, (laughs) you find a way to make it happen. Yes. Yes. It's so true. She made me read the book, If There's a Will. There's a way. She was very motivational. She was always building up our self confidence, our self belief. You know, I always say that, yeah, she she helped me so much in my youth become a very confident version of myself because she was always there to kind of support me when even when I didn't feel very confident in my own self. You know, there was like that belief factor that at least said, well, at least I got someone supporting me and it's my mom. So she had to, right? That's you have awesome. To. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome though. That, what a great, I mean, what, and what a need at that age too, when you're in, in that age of your life. One thing that you said, I love the reframing. I love the reframing of 
if it's not a priority, like saying to yourself, like my business is not a priority to me right now. Because I think if we took the time in every aspect of our life, to your point, it's not just if you're an entrepreneur. If you take the time to do this with everything, it's not a priority to be the room mom right now. It's Mm -hmm. not, you know, to me, it's not a priority to, you know, attend every networking mixer that I'm invited to right now, you know, or, or just not even right now, but just, it's not a priority. It, if that starts to feel to your point, like icky, then I think that's when we know, okay, well, that's actually something I really care about. It's almost a great Mm -hmm. exercise to kind of find out the things that are true priorities to us because I, yeah, I tend to say yes to a lot of things. And I actually did an exercise for almost a year where, you know, I started really saying no, because one of the things I wanted to work on was setting better boundaries and really prioritizing my time because what I was finding is I wanted to build my business. I wanted to, you know, continue to grow my blog. I wanted to become an entrepreneur and go out on my own. But by saying yes to so many other things that were pulling me away from that, those priorities, I was, I slowly started to decrease the value of how important those things were to me. So Mm -hmm. then little by little, I was chipping away at what were true priorities because I was just opening up my calendar to everything. And it's kind of the whole saying, like, you know, if you're, if you're everything to everyone at all times, well, then you're really nothing to no one at any time because you can't, you, you can't show up. And I preach and teach and coach and develop and everything around being your most authentic self and showing up as your most authentic self and, and being able to do that. But you can't when you're frazzled, when you are constantly, you know, being pulled at so many different, you know, so many different, in so many different directions. So I love the reframing of that because I don't think we do that enough. I think we assume that we do. But to your point, I think it's, I think our way of prioritizing things is saying, I don't have time for that. I don't have time mm-hmm. for that because. Yeah. Uh, you know, because, because in my, in my, in our minds, I think we believe that when we say like, I don't have time for that. Oh, it's because I'm leaving room for all these other things. But are we really, are we really? Yeah. And the thing is too, I'll say as an added kind of tangible action item here, because everyone feels like they don't have time. Everybody feels busy. In fact, it's sort of like a badge of honor these days. Like mm. think about the last time you were at a networking event or you were chit chatting mm-hmm. and someone asked you how you were, or you asked someone else. You probably hear good, you probably hear fine, but you probably equally as often hear busy. Mm. People say this a lot and it's All sort of time. like, yeah, and it's it's like a good thing. It's like a good thing to feel busy. Now, I like a full life. I like you. I like to say yes to a lot of things. Like I'm multi-passionate right. as you are. And so in one way I understand, but in other ways, when I think of the word busy, I also think of like stress, frazzled, like feeling like I'm constantly on the go and never have a minute. And I don't like that feeling. Mm -hmm. And so we have to remember that it's not necessarily like a place we're we're striving to get to, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's number one. And number two, you know, even though as busy as we are, as busy as we feel, we all get these free pockets of time throughout the day. We all get them. Don't even tell me you don't because nope. we all do. <laughs> Absolutely. You're sitting I do. in the pickup line yep. at school. You got some free minutes. You are, I don't know, waiting for the last few minutes of dinner in the oven. Those are some few minutes, mm-hmm. right? Like there's, there's, there's pockets of time all throughout the day. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're not busy 24 seven. Okay. And if you are, that's like pretty serious. We need to talk on another level. Right. So during those pockets, if you don't even have the clarity of how you want to spend your time, if you don't have those visions, those goals, and I know you work so hard on, on this in your business Mm -hmm. and creating those visions and those goals and those vision boards and all that good stuff. If you don't have that, what you inevitably Mm -hmm. end up doing is you inevitably Mm -hmm. fill that time with garbage. So this is when you start the doom scrolling. This Mm. is when you, you know, are chit chatting with no purpose, you know, Mm. like this is, and there's purpose in purposeless chit chat. I don't mean to say that. Like there's, you can do that and grow connections with people and things like that. But if this is not serving you in the long term of like building a friendship or looking for inspiration on your social media or whatever it is Mm -hmm. toward those visions and those goals, it's, it's just filling your time and making you feel quote unquote busy with things that aren't helpful. 
There's so much truth in that. And I think that's something that is a piece of what you and I both do oftentimes when we uncover, you know, those little pockets of time, like you were talking about with, with clients or just in conversation. And I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of it too. I mean, I was thinking of all Same. the different ways. I'm Same. like, I had 10 minutes earlier in between a meeting and like, what do I do? I find myself scrolling, you know, I find myself just, oh, I need to check in on this person or let me see if, you know, let me see what's new on LinkedIn or let me see, you know, what, you know, how many new threads I can read in five minutes before I hop on this call instead of maybe I should have looked at the content that I was, you know, going to be doing before that meeting. So I think there's just, like you said, those pockets of time are very important for us to prioritize those. Like they, they actually have their own separate and just as important measure of focus put on them that we fail to, we fail to acknowledge. So to wrap up though, I do want to touch on biz management and time management, because I know this is what your work focuses on. And so tell us, you know, explain to the listeners, like what it is that you do within your courses, you know, how do you coach and develop moms? Because I know that this business one is something that is so important and it's your purpose. It's your purpose. It's your passion. It's what you do. And I want to make sure that you have an opportunity to share, you know, what it is that you coach and develop other women and entrepreneurs through. Yes. Thank you so much. So in Mama Work It, we pretty much have two tracks. We have the time management track and the biz management track. And because we've been talking so much about business, I'll start with that one. So okay. that is really uh, a place if you are an ambitious mom who is looking to build or grow your business, that is the place you want to be. It is a 90-day program complete with online learning, coaching, community, guest experts who come in. You've been a guest expert, yes, Maria. I have. I have. And just so much wonderful knowledge to help you kind of get started in that entrepreneurial dream while also recognizing all the many hats that you wear in your day-to-day -day life. So that's the biz management track. The time management track is a four week program where we help you go from feeling overwhelmed to empowered in how you are managing your time and schedule, how you are showing up so that you can insert whatever goal is meaningful to you, figure out how to make that happen in your life, even if you feel like you are too busy in this season. So. Those are the two main tracks we have at Mama Work It. Of course, there's always one-to-one -one coaching that I do with clients as well. And tons of other resources like books, like the blog, like the podcast. Take your pick because like I, like I said and like you said, like this is really what I am here to do professionally. Mm -hmm. And I just feel so fortunate that I have these avenues to reach the working mom community in this way. Oh, I love it. I love it. I, when I, I, when I think about, you know, what it means to kind of create the vision, I mean, you just, you come to mind, you, I have several friends, you know, in this boat, but like when I just, you, you have helped me so much focus on even my own time management around building my business, you know, outsourcing some of the little things. I know we talked, you know, we've talked about that. Like just, you know, is it something that I have to do? Do I absolutely have to do this? No, I can get someone else to do this. You know, I have someone in my corner who I can, you know, help. And I know that, you know, you and I had a call and, and we identified some of those, you know, me trying to kind of do it all. And, and you had said to me like, Hey, if this is really important, like, you know, these things have to go by the, you know, by the wayside, it's managing your time better, you know? And I think the neat thing about it is too, is I knew a lot of what you were telling me, but I needed to hear it from you. Like mm. I could, I could have even, as I'm folding laundry, like crying, being like, where is my time going in my day? I'm thinking, you know, I know the answer, but I just needed to hear it. I needed to have you tell me because then it resonated and it was like, you know what? Marissa is so right. I need to not do this. I need to create better boundaries. I need to manage my time more effectively. And that starts with outlining my priorities. And then once I started to do that, things shifted for me so much. And, you know, our conversations and our ongoing and continue, you know, continuous collaboration and conversation around, you know, the work that you do is so powerful and so impactful because, you know, I always say to people that like creating the vision when we, I work with clients one-on-one -on -one and stuff, I'm like, listen, I'm not a rocket scientist. A lot of this is stuff that like, we just need to hear. We need that mirror. We need that accountability mirror. And sometimes that's what I can provide for clients. That's what you do too. And you do it so well. You, you do it to where it is, 
you know, it, it's very, it's direct, but it comes from such a loving place because you truly want to help people. And so I just, I think that the, the resources that you have, your books are amazing. And you also have, you, did you mention your journal? You also have a journal too. The journal planner. Yes. It's yes. one of the books. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. I have all of them. <laughs> so they are on my nightstand. I have kept the journal close by and there honestly were tools that when I was building out my own business to kind of rip that bandaid off and say like, I'm going to leave corporate. I'm going to do the dang thing. I'm going to get it done. That's ironically one of the goals that I work through with people. And I always say, everyone has that goal. That's like, you know, to your point, if you were, if, if someone said tomorrow, you know, is the day you are no longer going to be on this earth. What does that do the dang, you know, thing goal? What mm -hmm. is that goal that you're like, well, crap, I want to get this done. And for me, it was starting a business. It was, yeah. you know, starting a business. What is your do the dang thing goal? Well, I can tell you what it's not. It wouldn't be like skydiving or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> God, I don't know. Oh, there's so many. I don't know. God, you put me on the spot, Maria. <laughs> I feel like I'm stepping into a lot of it already, mm -hmm. you know, but I guess if you had to say like, I, I guess it would be something like some epic travel with my family. Mm. You know, those are often things. It's a big I, one for a lot of people. Yeah. Those are often things I'm like, I put excuses in for, you know, like, oh, it's so expensive or, oh, like this or that or whatever, you know, like, oh, school schedule. But I mean, if you told me tomorrow's my last day, I'd be like, well, let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And I think that that's, that's a turning point for a lot of people because then they start to see all of their goals in that, in that light or in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, they start saying, Oh, wow, well, I had to do the dang thing. Like, what would I do? You know, right. I'd ask, I'd, right. you know, I'd marry the girl. I'd, you know, I would, I would, I would stop waiting or yeah, I would take that trip. I would call my mom. I would do all, you know, enter, you know, X being whatever, you know, your, your, your thing is. And I think that also when you align your time with some of those things as well, that's why it's just the perfect marriage of like, you know, okay, now I'm intentionally focused on exactly what I want to do. I'm planned for my time. I know exactly where I need to be, what I want to do, et cetera. It just aligns yeah. so well. And that message that you carry with it of prioritizing your time, because it's also an investment in yourself and it's an investment in you becoming the most you know, and, and best version of who you are. And we can't do that when we're just constantly, you know, making excuses or, or not creating those priority lists. But I love right. the idea of creating a, creating it in a way that's like, I don't prioritize, or this is not a priority to me to kind of get to that level. Yeah. And it's a fantastic yeah. exercise. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. This oh was my so gosh. fun. Yes. Okay. So where can people find you? Where can they order your books and your resources and where can they find you as well? I know you've got a lot of places where people, a lot of touch points people have in order yes. to contact you and I want them to have all of them. You got it. Okay. So the best place to find me is my website, which is www.mamaworkit.com and it's spelled M-A-M-A. And on there, you will find links to the books, links to other resources, the time management program, the biz management club, all that good stuff. Lots of free, great content on there as well. And if it's okay, I would love to tell your listeners about an upcoming free masterclass yes, that I'm hosting. Absolutely. Yeah, it's happening on September 6th. And it is called Secrets to Building Your Biz in One Hour a Day. So I am giving you, like pulling back the curtain, giving you lots of really, really good productivity hacks, mindset shifts, things that really helped me, especially yeah. during that three-year period as I was building and growing alongside a very demanding corporate role and raising, you know, my four at the time kids that turned three to four during that season. So just lots of really great tips and tricks there that we are doing in that masterclass. We're giving away some things. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be really awesome. So be sure to sign up for that if that's something that's interesting to you. And then of course you can find me on the regular social channels, mostly Instagram and Facebook at Let Mama Work It, and then LinkedIn, Marissa Lonick. That's where I'm most active there. And I think that's everything. So thank you. Oh my gosh, fantastic. And yes, we'll link your free 
masterclass as well on September 6th. We'll link that in the show notes so that awesome. people can access that too. And we'll also post it whenever we talk about this episode that is launching. And I just really thank you so much for your time. And definitely I would encourage every single one of you to go follow her, link in with her. It's just a phenomenal resources on all things, just time management, but you also do so much in the motivational space as well. And, and you, you speak so much to how, when you can manage your time, you can better create the vision for your life. And I think that's what we're all Absolutely. here for, right? That's what we, that's yeah. what we tune in for. That's what we're, that's what we're showing up for is how are we going to create the vision for our life in a way that serves us and serves others and makes us the most authentic version of who we are. And you are living proof of of creating the vision for your life and and building out the time and the processes in order to do so. So thank you thank so you. much. I'm and so, I'm so grateful to surround myself with women like you. So thank you, Maria. Oh, likewise. Well, it's I uh, yes, I we are going to make in real life happen. Yes, we are going we to are. make that. And then when we do, we will post about it. <laughs> we might even have to do a live <laughs> for sure. Yeah. A live We're going to be recording. so excited. We're probably going to post more than once. <laughs> yes, we will. We will for sure. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and uh, for making time. And thank you. Yeah. You're just such a gem. I love you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks.